Hi, I'm Ikea. And for today's video, I wanted to give you a guided tour of Warlords of New York. And that's going to be with the intent of making a watch alt. And that's going to be basically an alt that only exists to give me watch points. And I'm going to use those watch points for resources and credits and optimization resources. And I'm basically going to show you the full path that I would take with one major exception that uh, impacts the run length, especially uh, of this a lot. But I will explain that once we uh, reach in New York, why I've chosen uh, to do it that way. To lay out what is going to happen, I'm going to make a DC start character, boost to World Tier 5. Then we're going to head into Warlords of New York and uh, then run through the entirety of Warlords of New York. This will be likely uh, somewhere in the area of uh, four and a half hours, likely. And I'm going to split it up into hour-long chunks uh, whenever I have a timer with me and whenever we start getting close to an hour, I will try to f think of a natural place for us to stop and uh, then we will basically break the video up uh, into segments in that way. And seeing as we're going to have plenty of time to talk, I'm just going to start off. And yeah, as I said, I'm going to do a DC start. We could, of course, do a Warlords of New York start. But a Warlords of New York, New York start makes it so that you uh, cannot get uh, account shared blueprints or account shared resources, which is a bit annoying. And also the DC start allows you to get an extra exotic component along the way for minimal work. And it's, uh, and it's also a, a farm of its own. So I wanted to actually show that and also how that is done. So while we are uh, loading, uh, I will say that uh, I will also skip all cutscenes. So this isn't that kind of a run. Also, I really don't care what my character looks like. I'm just going to accept whatever it is and I'm just going to cover them up. But yeah, we're going to skip all cutscenes. So this isn't a let's play kind of thing. Uh, I am kind of going for speed, but it isn't also a speed run or anything like that as there are ways of going much faster than I will go, especially with uh, other, uh, with running it with friends or something. And yeah, I am going to actually quickly cover up my uh, character here by just going into here. I had already chosen the Stinger Hunter, I think, yeah. And uh, the one thing that I will change actually is that I will go for a Balaclava instead of that mask because I don't really like the masks in the game. <laughs> And yeah, so we're going to be a little hunter going on a little expedition uh, into DC and uh, New York. This is the old uh, starting tutorial for the original game, the base game when it came out. And this is uh, us a little bit outside of DC in a little settlement. And we're helping uh, Ager Sanders over there. Agent Sanders is also, you will meet her again when doing the breach for uh, Pentagon. But here we're just going through, you saw someone pulse, one of our allies pulse there. That's the first skill use of the game. And we're just going to push up with our allies. So the trigger point here is that Agent De La Cruz over there will come up to this uh, grayish car. And uh, once they reach that point, the a grenade will hit them and... Uh, the game will prompt us to revive him and that's our little tutorial for reviving and I will actually do that now and this leads us into our first cutscene. I'm gonna skip that one. There's another secondary lore kind of cutscene. I'm gonna skip them both. This one is unskippable so I cannot um, and but this one is also kind of cool as this is just outside of where the play area for the game is, the DC area for the game. As you can see, in front of us, uh, if you follow the line of that bridge, basically, that is the backside of Lincoln Memorial, uh, the way that we usually see it. So we usually rush into Lincoln Memorial from the other side there. You can see the Washington Monument and the Capitol in the background there. But yeah, so this is outside of our play area. But yeah, it gives a nice intro to the city. This one is skippable, but in the bottom right, you will see uh, it is loading. So there are some some of these cutscenes where it's loading basically in the background of it. So even when I skip them, they will play for a few seconds. And we have reached the point that we are in DC and we are going to head in and assist Manny 
with the defense. Well, we're going to uh, d assist with the defense of the White House, and this is Manny uh, introducing himself, basically. In a second, we will fight uh, two hyenas. They are um, <laughs> beating a dead horse. Uh, the beating part is uh, literal. The horse part is uh, figurative. But yeah, it's. Uh, I'm going to shoot the right one first because he always goes into cover. Otherwise, the left one just stands there. The right one will go behind that uh, little bit of cover the second you start shooting. So there's a crate along the way there just showing you how crates basically work. But yeah, we're just going to run past it. The thing we're going for, actually, you know, I should first say this. So these three enemies here, uh, the last one that I kill will always have a drop. I always kill him like this, grenade on the left guy, shoot the right guy, and then I shoot the middle guy. But yeah, if I did it in different order, so if I killed, uh, for instance, that guy as last, he would have this drop. And this drop is always a knee pad. And uh, I want you to just uh, also file that away a little bit in your back of your head that, yeah, our first uh, actual drop, so not, we could have had chest and stuff up, popped open, but our first actual drop in uh, the base game is a knee pad. And that will come up uh, once we are on our way to Haven in New York. But yeah, we're going to move on to uh, f break up uh, this assault on the White House and help them and... Uh, be the big heroes and start the game uh, off in that way and the reason we have to do these parts is uh, for the boost to be able to be activated and the boost will take us to world tier 5 from uh, the level uh, level 2 that we will be at that point for that boost to be activated we have to have met Manny we have to have seen that cutscene with him basically and we will have to uh, have gotten our first skill from the quartermaster. Those are the requirements for the boost to be activated. Here I will show actually that, yeah, you, you can actually run in too fast and uh, catch, catch on fire. <laughs> and there's actually one enemy alive, which uh, I actually didn't uh, realize. I was hoping. But yeah, sometimes when you run into early, especially, yeah, I can likely do it again. So yeah, if I can go in here too fast, yeah, I will catch on fire. I can roll there. This cutscene is unskippable. I will try to actually show one thing with um, a lady that runs away from us very quickly and then um, does it even, uh, even faster than uh, any human should be able to. And hopefully I can show that. Uh, I get do get it regularly, but not always. But yeah, that one that that's us uh, seeing the White House for the first time. But yeah, this lady in front of us that is running. Actually, I am close enough, likely, for me to be able to show this. But yeah, she goes around that corner. Ah, you kind of caught it. But yeah, she goes around the corner and despawns. <laughs> the game tries its best to make sure that you can't actually see it. But yeah, we can move a little bit faster than the game uh, ex uh, expect. So yeah, here we're gonna head in. We're gonna skip this cutscene where we are meeting Manny and his toys, and uh, he's trying to send us to Kelso. But instead, we're gonna. Um, well, he's sending us to the quartermaster and then to Kelso. But we're just gonna go to the quartermaster, and then we're just gonna suddenly be a level thirty world tier five. I'm gonna take the turret and the drone. Those will be my main skills for this entire run through. Likely, I will likely not swap skills once. So from the moment that this uh, voice file. The, with this, the theater settlement is off to the east of Manny Place. That's the point that uh, I know that we can uh, actually uh, fast travel onward. I accidentally went to the map, so that locks me into uh, clicking through all that. Uh, I did again, actually. So, but where we need to go is actually uh, into the store, into add ons. We have this boost over here. We can use that boost to uh, boost our character up to world tier 5. We, this one is infinite. Uh, every character you make can, can make this once, can use this once. But yeah, every character also only needs it once, so you have infinite amounts of it. One thing I do want to show uh, real quickly is this uh, nice little um, bass kick sound that this makes. Uh, yeah, I have been known to just uh, sometimes sit here for uh, way too long and just be like, And just <laughs> mess around with that. But yeah, plays a nice animation. One that also you may have never seen if you've never done the boost this way. And this will lead us into being a World Tier 5 character with a set, uh, set of items and such of World Tier 5. That we're quickly going to try and replace. And also a really cool video actually plays after this loading screen, which uh, summarizes the journey of level 1 to 30 and the journey of 
well tier one to five and it does it pretty well uh it's a really cool video that very few people have seen i uh, i guess but yeah you can uh, look it up uh, with likely division two boost video or something will have that uh, we'll find that i'm gonna um, skip the invasion cutscene so the reason i'm now world tier 5 is mostly to do this uh, which is the the weekly shd requisition uh, this is of course that project that gives you um, an exotic cache now to get the resources and such that are required for that i'm not of course going to sit here and farm that for an hour or two but first i'm going to actually go spend my points on demolitionist and i'm going to fill up demolitionist because i'm going to be demolitionist all the way through to the end of uh, the campaign of uh, warlords likely i'm not going to swap and uh, i just especially want these weapon ones because yeah, 15 extra weapon damage is actually quite a lot uh, while leveling. It is quite noticeable. So yeah, I've done all of demolitionists except the side pistol because I don't want to have it. But what we would, and we would have that in uh, Warlords as well. We could actually meet Rhodes and do it there. But what we wouldn't have in New York is her, Inaya. And Inaya sells this account shared blueprints and account shared materials. We're going to get both. So we have all the blueprints and we have all the resources of this account shared and i have it shared between all my characters on this account as you can see earlier on we didn't we barely had any resources to spend on this but now of course we have the ones from the account share so i can get uh, those four resources done so all of the the extra resources the only thing that will remain so water uh, components and um, food are not shared across characters so it's only the crafting resources so also things like keys and such do not get transferred over or exotic crafting components or such all of those things are, are not uh, carried over so the only thing we will need just to complete that project real quick is uh, um, water for this week it is of course on rotation each week I will actually show, so for water, I will always go here, which is, I will fast travel to Lincoln, and then I will walk over to here and grab that water. For food, uh, there is a node underneath where this territory control is. Um, you can go to this um, safe house. From the safe house, you can walk over there. There's also even a few crates along the way to there, but that will be more than 300 uh, food uh, altogether with those three crates along the way. This water node here by itself is more than 250, which is we need 250 of the resource that we need for that week. And for components, uh, you can go over here, here in the northwest of uh, Lincoln. But this one isn't uh, 250. There is one crate along the way, and sometimes that will be enough to uh, give you 250. But what you usually do is grab all the, all the ones there, be pretty close to 250, and then go. I will go over here. I will fast travel to uh jefferson plaza and from jefferson plaza this is a very short walk to here but here there's only like five crates but that's enough to reach us to get us to 250 and uh in that way um make it so that we have enough uh, to spend so here i'm going to jump to lincoln from lincoln i'm just going to take that short walk get the 250 resources finish that project and get exotic cash and this on its own is actually a grind that you can do like this so if you do it without all the talking and the explaining and such, um, this will usually take uh, around eight minutes. I got aggroed by likely the Christmas goblin, but I don't see him, so I'm just going to just keep moving. I'm just curious what I've got aggroed by here. Oh, this, but he spawned way far out. But that's uh, okay. I am actually going to kill him and grab a level 30 O'Carroll or whatever. But yeah, that's... Uh, um, I was talking about the project. So, uh, the project, you can do it real quick. I'm going to actually grab that O'Carroll and just... You, why not? Um, the project is one of the... This project is one of the fastest ways to get... An exotic component. Exotic components are, of course, really handy for expertise and such, so they are really valuable. And this is faster if you're only after exotic components. This is a lot faster than uh, the Anderson farm. So almost 2 to 1. Not, not, not exactly 2 to 1, but close to 2 to 1. And... Uh, but the Anderson, of course, it gives you a level 40 exotic. So this will give you a level 30 exotic. So it's only useful for the component, or if you 
want to actually stick around at level 30. But it isn't uh, useful for uh, trying to get a full set of exotics or such, or if you're after a specific exotic for a character. Uh, I am going to just quickly make sure I grabbed everything. So I should have more than enough water, 264. I'm going to get uh, that exotic cache. And uh, I'm going to open it. And one thing that I usually do while going uh, through this is uh, whatever weapon I get, uh, I will actually uh, equip or whatever gear as well as I get. I will just usually use it for the first few levels, just remind myself that that exotic exists. Because yeah, it's usually if it's a weapon, it's a chameleon or pestilence or um, uh, merciless, the, the old year one uh, weapons, basically. So yeah, seeing as they don't get much use, it is nice to use them once in a while here. And by the point that they completely become ineffective around like level 33 or 34, where normal weapons will just overtake them by base damage, then I will swap them out and deconstruct them for their components. And they will go basically to my characters, to just the, the all my characters that I have because of that account shared resources. Yeah, so here we're going to head into uh, New York. And yeah, that's, that's about... If you, yeah, don't do it uh, with talking, it's uh, 8-ish minutes, so you can just, from this point, basically, you could delete this character and make this run again for another component. Um, I won't be doing that, of course, I'll be going through the entire thing because I'm going after watch points. One thing I want to make note here is that, yeah, a lot of people missed this line uh, starting from here, and it, yeah, it should have been in, like, bold and a little bit larger maybe by itself and underneath this warning but yeah you will not be able to return to dc until the new york uh, new york city campaign is complete and that is actually quite important like a lot of people don't read that part they go to the new york and go like oh why can't i go back or ah, i wanted still to do some stuff and i didn't know it would lock me in but yeah it will lock you in and for our case that's fine of course because we we don't care we know what we are doing yeah, we're going to skip that cutscene and this video. And this video is a hidden loading screen, so yeah, it's going to play for a few seconds of Kelso talking. And this will basically put us at a point where the Warlord start would be. And if I hadn't talked, this would be around 10-ish uh, minutes in. This one's skippable again, so I will. And yeah, I'm just going to... Oh, actually, I'm going to quickly uh, equip my drone. Because, yeah, I am going to use a turret and a drone for this whole run. And I'm just going to rush in. And one thing that I um, want you to make note of is you can play this super aggressive. Look how little damage I take from getting shot at. This is story content. You shouldn't play this as if it's heroic. You don't have to play it safe. Just rush it. Here we're going to fight our first wave. Uh, well, the, that was our first wave, those two guys. But this is our first, like, first real encounter of fighting enemies here. And this will give us uh, another drop. And uh, it's going to be uh, a green drop on the ground. I'm actually not going to stick with that weapon. I'm just going to use whatever I have. And... Uh, that's that drop is also the reason why I made you take note of the knee pad earlier, because yeah, that enemy over there dropped it. I'm actually going to go focus on that. But yeah, our first drop of uh, Warlords of New York is also a knee pad, and this is always fixed uh, to be a knee pad. It will be any of the brands that are available in Warlords, but uh, it won't be anything but a knee pad. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if that's like a inside joke on their part or you know some design doc somewhere that they followed but yeah the first drops the first drops from enemies are fixed to be an e-pad and yeah that drop is also always fixed it will always drop an e-pad there so it's not a randomized drop or that your first drop it will be always in that fight here we're waiting for kelso to catch up when we're gonna head into city hall and after fighting here for a few rooms we will move on to heading towards Haven. And all this part up to Haven is basically instanced in the same way that uh, the whole part of us leading up to uh, 
the White House is instanced. So in those points, we cannot actually be joined on or we cannot group with other players. Those parts are basically required to be solo. So even when you are boosting with groups, what you will need to do is make this run uh, on your own all the way till you reach the point where you are at Haven. And only once you have reached Haven is when you are allowed to group up. Which is one of those things that, yeah, especially for boosting, you should know, so not to make everyone wait. Usually when, at the time that uh, groups ma group up together, uh, it's, it's meant that, yeah, you should have made that run already. And here we will always have a blue drop from one of these enemies, usually yeah, that guy, uh, someone in the back. It can be uh, grenadiers or... It can be any of the enemies, but usually it's one of the people that spawns back here. And this one will always be a blue chest. So a blue uh, body armor. And uh, the oddity with this one especially is that it can, it can at times be a Yao piece. So a Yao brand. And uh, yeah, that isn't really normal because normally Yao doesn't drop outside of DZ, of course, or PvP caches or DZ caches or such. But yeah, there it can. And here is also a little bit of oddity. Here I'm just going to interact there. I'm going to run away into this corner. There's this video that plays. and But when I skip that cutscene, I have been put back uh, at my initial position. Also, my drone got deconstructed. And uh, oddly enough, I, I always expected this to be a phase, if you know that meaning, so we, that we had been moved from basically one place to another game world-wise. But yeah, you can actually walk all the way back still. Also, if you blow up stuff here or throw a fire grenade here, you can see that it is actually still the same room that you're in, just your character has been, their position has been reset. Which is, yeah, not something the game does a lot, so I just want to point at that. gonna head into this fight popping drone for all of these fights you will just see me use turret and drone and partially that's also because i actually do have a uh, my turret and my drone are both expertise to level 20 so they are a little bit more powerful than uh normal turret and drone just to have 20 more skill damage basically and that does make them quite a bit more effective uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Like, I have it because I play across a lot of characters and such. But yeah, I wouldn't really recommend going for anything other than weapons for expertise. I wanted to also make a specific note of uh, this crate over here. So this is a model that... Uh, this is basically a water. Uh, one of those uh, water canisters that we basically looted in, um, in DC a little bit earlier. This is... Uh, the New York variant of them, I believe, but th th they do not get used much. So the, this blue one, I've only, I only know this location for it. This is the only place where there's a blue one. There are a few yellow ones that have components inside of them uh, on a very specific position on the map, which is actually by two bridges over here. Um, but yeah, that's the only places that this model gets used. And it's, it's very odd that they've made it, but they barely used it at all so yeah if you know any other locations of these uh, i would uh, love to know them but i don't believe that there are any so uh, i would be pleasantly surprised to learn of other locations uh, of those i just want to yeah just uh, share that one here we will also always get a force dropped one of these enemies will always drop uh, an ar and this is our first uh, a level 31 ar and I am actually going to take a second uh, to quickly equip it and mod it out. Well, no, not mod it out all the way, just plus 10 rounds. And yeah, usually level 31 weapons will be a little bit better than... Uh, well, they won't actually be better than exotics, but a lot of the level 30 gear... So unless you had like really good level 30 gear, it would la really good level 30 gear would last you a few levels into here. But uh, everything that's... Uh, is a jambled mess of the boost basically will get replaced by blue gear as soon as it can it's strange being here where it all so yeah here we are heading into uh dc kelso holds her spiel one thing i kind of want to show you is that uh, <laughs> if you have never tried it so we are here of course we're headed towards haven but 
I know where Parnell is. I, I'll just go kill Parnell, right? I'll go over here. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, a timer already starts. And uh, yeah, by the time I even try to get a little bit far away, it's uh, objective failed. This will put us back at that gate, so it's not a far thing. But yeah, I wonder how many people actually know about, uh, about that. The interesting thing is also the second time we go through this, um, Kelso uh, no longer uh, holds that spiel, so <laughs> she doesn't uh, do her whole uh, monologue. And we're going to head up here and fight some uh, cleaners. Along the way, I will always just grab, grab some of the resources and loot. Looks like there's trouble up ahead. Get to One thing I want to show here as well, I'm just going to not engage him for a sec few seconds. And you're going to see that uh, that guy walks into the flame grower of the other one and uh, sets himself on fire. And then they get angry at me for some reason. The oddity there is that uh, that did not used to happen. So I've, I've, I've gone back and I've uh, looked at footage from around release, just people let's playing or doing run-throughs of uh, Warlords, and that didn't used to happen. So I don't know when exactly uh, it has changed to be that way. And here's our um, last fixed drop of this uh, tutorial area. And that is this uh, purple uh, backpack. This will always be a purple backpack. The rest of it is all random. We got a pretty crappy one. It is, doesn't have a damage talent and it's uh, 511. So yeah, sometimes you get lucky with uh, a damage brand or a damage talent. And sometimes you get very lucky and have both. And that will stick with you for quite a few levels because uh, a purple gear will... It will be quite a few levels around like 34, 35 where we will start seeing purple gear just drop quite commonly. Before that, uh, it's quite rare. So here you see me just taking a little bit of a wider path than Kelso, and that's just to grab all of this, uh, this loot here. And uh, I also just see now that I've had a really lucky thing of having a, a transmog item of that Shasta glove. It's rare for me to still get any items that I don't have yet, so that's nice. This is a cutscene that just has to play, basically. These guys are completely uh, You're not welcome here. completely scripted, so even if I like toss a grenade into them, they don't uh, really uh, change anything. In a second, um, we will have the cutscene introducing Haven. I want you to pay attention to the longitude and latitude of it and that's also likely why this building was chosen over any of the other buildings as our settlement so yeah heading in I'm just gonna roll in and yeah as you can see they are the same longitude as latitude so <laughs> that's that's a pretty narrow band and yeah it's the safest place in lower manhattan few buildings will be in that line basically so yeah that's or in a line where uh, long to the lat dude are matching so here also we see uh, a, another rarity and that is um, an agent that isn't Kelso because Kelso we see quite often of course but uh, another agent that is actually geared up with all of the gear knee pads and stuff backpack and uh, has a watch because we have a few agents that have just the watch and uh, like the one in federal emergency bunker but they aren't geared up. So yeah, here we have one that is geared up. He also somewhat resembles uh, Agent De La Cruz. I don't believe it is the exact same face, but yeah, I haven't really d dived deep into it. We're going to head into a cutscene where we would, for the first time, meet uh, Fei Lau, Cody Rhodes, Roy Benitez, and then another cutscene where all of the main antagonists are introduced. We're going to skip all that, of course, and head into... Uh, our ability to pick our one of the lines. So for, I'm actually just quickly going to meet Rhodes, just so I have access to this this menu here for um, our specialization. If I do want to alter anything, but likely I won't. I'm going to also meet Benitez, and that's just to get access to his store. You wouldn't be able to interact him with him at the store at this part without that. And what I'm looking for here, especially, is 
uh, going up in levels, all of these items will go up in levels as well as we pass through them and they will go into better rarity. So they will be uh, either going into uh, superiors or specialized, uh, so blues and purples. But the item itself will always be the same. So it, this slot will always be a PP19, but then as it goes up, it might be a blue, blue, a blue PP19 and then a purple. And starting with purples, you start to get talents. So those, those are actually handy sometimes to have because yeah, talents add quite a lot. But what I'm looking for basically is a good AR. And that's likely one of the things that I'm going to buy at some point. If I don't get a good purple AI, uh, AR at any point, I will just buy one from the vendor. That's also why you see me looting. And uh, there's a FAMAS here, and this FAMAS will likely be a purple FAMAS by level 37, 38. So I will likely buy that, put in sync on it, then that will be my weapon for the last few levels. The one thing I will always do when once I reach Haven is come over here and uh, start crafting my mods. So I am going to actually do that real quick. I grab the mods that some of the talents require, like that um, times eight scopes, if I get a good focus chest and I want to use it. Um, in magazines, I want to have all of the magazines that add quite a lot uh, utility, uh, especially the plus 20s and such, and the plus 35 for the LMG. Because, yeah, those, if I don't have those, it always feels weird to use weapons. They always empty out a, a lot sooner than I want them to. <laughs> and uh, that, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I somewhat struggle to use them often. And this one I will also make because this one will go into an M1A if I you know, catch one of those. Uh, here I will only make the pistol flashlight for the underbarrel, all of the underbarrel, other underbarrels we have. And here I only want the crit chance ones, which is uh, this muzzle brake for 556, five, for 762, and this suppressor for uh, 9mm. And once I have all those, I, I basically just quickly, I'm going to take a second and put them actually on my current weapon and uh, give it a paint as well. Why not? I'm actually gonna pop this cache and see what I get and that is actually that LMG is going to replace so I'm going to make sure that I actually deconstruct uh, this exotic weapon I'm not going to use it anymore I'm going to, I want to use that LMG secondary so yeah I'm going to actually deconstruct it make sure that it's deconstructed and that's gone into my resources with my other characters so even when I, once I delete this character this pool has already is a plus one already so um, it doesn't get lost. I'm going to just quickly check what my other gear is and what I have available. I will actually equip that 511 backpack, even if it is stupid. It's less stupid than I don't. Oh, actually, odd. Ah, so that was the Shasta glove. That's why they don't have it. So here we see that, yeah, in that area, I did actually get a Yal drop, which is actually not something I have seen before, I believe, even to have it. I've seen those that chest quite often be a Yal drop, but I did not know that a um, Yal glove can drop, especially a green Yal glove. Um, so yeah, we've learned something together today, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting. Um, I will actually keep that one uh, as oddity. I, I, I am actually quite surprised. I am going to. One thing I am going to quickly go into resources here and just uh, go through these just to get that um, exclamation mark out of the way uh, on the upper right there. As you saw, there was an exclamation point like up here and that's always distracting to me. So, and yeah, I will actually swap as much uh, level 30 gear to level 31 gear that I can. I will sell all junk and then I I'll actually will just sell all this as well, just real quickly. And yeah, I will go for credits, and that's for that exact reason of later on, I will want to buy some ARs, I want to be able to um, recalibrate some ARs to have in sync mostly. And in sync is very powerful for me here because it's going to add to my weapon, it's going to add to my turrets and uh, uh, drone. And yeah, we are headed off and I'm actually, so normally here is where, even if I were playing solo and not um, playing with allies or like friends or anything that we were a set up group, so to say, here is where I would go into the map and I would uh, go into this SHG tab and I would call for backup or I would go into social screen and then from here do a call for backup. And the call for backup, 
uh, is uh, if you have never used it before that means that uh, a, a higher level a same or higher level um, player can receive those and they can choose to join you so what often happens is that you get a level 40 to join you and especially getting a level 40 to join you is also why we use the boost also i will uh, grab all of these phones and uh, recordings just because uh, each of them uh, if you were to look up on the upper right what well, next one next time i grab one it's uh, around uh, 4.9k around this level an activity is 40k so 10 of those is more than one activity and uh, while there aren't a lot they add up across this whole run because i will grab likely 20 or so of those recordings and that will save me some time at the end uh, of how much i still need to reach level 40. and yeah that is actually leads back into that boosting and uh, group scaling so when you group scale with someone they will give you uh, you will receive xp as if you, at the le at the um, amount that you would at your skilled amount so if you are level if you're getting skilled to level 39 you're receiving xp as if you are level 39 basically but your requirements to level are still your in my case so in if i was doing it here it would be level 31 and that means that you level quite a lot faster and so much notably faster that if you were to uh, group skill through all of uh, all of the mandatory content so that's the four manhunts and camp clinton you would definitely definitely be level 40 by the time you do all of that content if you do not group skill at all at any point then at the end of all of the required parts so the four man hunts again and the camp clinton so not the other side missions that aren't required and uh, none of non no activities or such or projects that pop up uh, you would be around late 37 early 38 depending on what you did uh, reaching that point so that will mean because uh, liberty island requires you to be level 40 to start it that means that you would need uh, quite a few more well you need two more levels basically of xp to reach uh i am actually curious what is aggro with me here again okay it's just random raiders these guys are as well also called raiders which is something not everybody knows uh <laughs> Uh, a lot of people call them rioters because that's what they were called in Division 1, but uh, their actual uh, faction name is uh, raiders. I will actually kill this um, elite patrol. They are walking towards me, so I will actually quickly kill them. And yeah, so elite patrols, elite territory controls and such, they give quite a lot of XP, so it is worthwhile to go after them a little bit. And yeah, they're quite quite fast especially when you use a grenade launcher like that and this guy i will just shoot his backpack i'll actually move in so once he has actually fully removed his mask his uh, head is actually yeah completely available to us and there i just did that for xp and yeah you can see so that elite territory or uh, that elite um, patrol gave us 44k xp which is yeah about 10 phones so getting those phones is actually quite worthwhile and especially if you get them while you're group scaled, because then, yeah, you receive the XP as if you were uh, your skilled level. So that adds up quite a lot as well. And, you know, I will also go for all of those resources like food, water and uh, food, water and components. And that's mostly because I want this character to be well stocked on them, because when I reach the end point again uh, at level 40, I will have access to the level 40 SHG requisition, so I can get another exotic cache there. And usually what will happen is that this character, until I spend all of its point, is going to be a week or two. And in that time, I want to have enough resources on them that I basically just, on the Tuesdays of resets, I will log into this character, just quickly spend, uh, if I need some resources, I will spend uh, some of the watch points on it to get those resources and then i will still have enough of the main resources left over so the crafting materials i will get from the watch and then any of the main resources like water food or components that i still need will still be plenty of them on 
on them so I can just quickly get that project done and just get a few more weeks uh, use out of them that way until I delete them for the next watch out basically. One thing I should make note of is that we could have actually headed at this um, uh, safe house right away and uh, talk to this community leader uh, right away and we would have skipped that initial side mission but actually one of the things that i do want is to have uh, good levels of xp and level up as much as i can and actually those side missions at the start are not bad xp there's a little bit they're a little bit more than uh, an activity uh, even an elite activity so and they're a lot faster and f especially for this one it's along the way the one for the next zone so we could instead of going to uh, this uh, turret or this um capture of the CP uh, in here in the next zone, we could actually head into the uh, the safe house right away, but we would miss out on the XP of it here. And while it isn't a lot, it is, it is, yeah, it is an easy XP. And also I want to just show them. And usually this is the path that I take. So yeah, there we met uh, the community leader. We know that the tombs is where Parnell is now. And so we're going to head over there and kill Parnell. One thing I'm going to quickly check is quite often that is a that is a named group. And that is also the case today here with a rider over there. And I will actually kill them because that 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 named will um, drop uh, gear. And that might actually be a better AR than what I'm uh, running right now. I'm going to... Uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm not very powerful. I have way too many blue cores, likely. But yeah, this is the best gear I have, so it is what it is. And you are kind of dependent on the gear that you get when you run it like this. But one thing you could also do is just put a set together, either at level 30 or um, even level 31. Actually, I am actually going to put that Grupo backpack. And I am going to equip that Providence love just get some more red cores in here and um yeah you can make a set and some people actually do so some people even have a level 30 regulus with a headhunter chest that they just put on at level 30 just to make this run faster for them uh, and there are a lot of ways like that i know some people that even have uh, a level 30 gear uh, set a uh, complete loadout basically and a level 35 loadout all together they basically put that on the character at level 30 they equip the first one once they reach the level 35 36 or something that for the second loadout they uh, equip that loadout and that does help a little bit it's kind of like um, uh, twinking in uh, world of warcraft if you know that term but yeah i actually quite quite enjoy um going through and looting and just making the best build that i can it's not of course a build but just a little bit of oh, okay i'll if i put this and this together and this and this then i'll have these stats oh i already have seska here so maybe i'll put it here and stuff like that. i quite enjoy that also in weapons as well um, so here i've got an f2000 i haven't used the f2000 in quite a while so here it's yeah just you know just a reminder of like oh yeah this weapon works like this and uh, also i yeah i do not have the 40 round mag or the 50 round mag in it i have a 40 round mag at the moment i just for a second there was like confused at uh, why my weapon stopped firing at the point that it did i'm actually also quickly gonna put uh the plus especially the plus 35 on this lmg and yeah i will often take the time for a second just to equip uh weapons especially at my level So yeah, here we're heading through the tombs, a mission that I actually quite like. <laughs> I, I know that I'm likely in a very small minority that uh, will uh, ever say the words uh, tombs and missions that they like. <laughs> I know the common consensus on this mission is that uh, everybody hates it, especially for the boss fight. But I actually quite enjoy all of the Warlord missions. Uh, they are a little bit more mechanic heavy so i mean it's not that they are mechanic heavy just by standards in of gaming in general but they are a little bit more mechanic heavy than the rest of the game 
So there you saw me actually on the other side of the glass shoot open this door and uh, go grab that crate. I will actually um, loot everything and go after all of the loot positions in missions. And I'm doing that especially just also to show you them as those are also all available at level 40, of course. And next run throughs of those missions, I hope you go grab all of those loot because yeah, they are skilled. So if you're doing them on heroic, they are skilled to be heroic drops. They're just another drop, uh, just as if you would gotten them from an enemy or something. So it is, if you're gearing still, if you are actually still into, you know, getting gear, uh, you aren't someone that just does one build and has it maxed out and they're happy just having that one build uh, then yeah uh, there's always still some value to just looting uh, even if it's just for turning it into alloys and weaves or something else or just the other crafting materials you saw me throw my turret up there that's also a trick that I always recommend is in places where you can put your turret very high, put them very high. And also if you can put it in a place where it can shoot an enemy in a place where they basically take cover, which up there basically the enemies, wherever they took cover up there on that left side, they would be shot by the turret. So um, they would have a bad time anyway. And that, that's a really easy trick. The downside of it is that you have to deconstruct it afterwards, so you don't get to go back and pick it up. But that's okay with uh, most of the content that we're doing here. Oh yeah, here I'm just pushing through this mission. Uh, not playing my best. I am actually a little bit... I haven't warmed up at all. I just went directly into this mission. And uh, my shooting is actually quite horrible. But yeah, that's uh, still we're good, making good time, and likely after this mission it will be the point where I might. Well, it depends on where we end this mission at what time it is, but we will either end after this mission or we will do the police headquarters after this mission. But yeah, here we're just taking care of drones. That one is a, a little bit stuck. The second wave spawns. I'm just gonna quickly kill those. And one thing I'm noticing already is that uh, I don't <laughs> know the solo spawns at all. <laughs> so normally I'm quite confident in knowing how much actually spawns because you, I have run this a lot uh, with four man. Um, and I have also ran this a lot with two man uh, scaling of numbers and health. But yeah, I've, I haven't ran it solo in... Uh, Detected. I would actually say years, likely. And yeah, that's because of that group scaling. That group scaling will make add basically an hour to this run. But of course, here I'm doing it this way because then I don't have to deal with, uh, well, basically other players. <laughs> I'm I'm not reliant on anybody else or waiting to get uh, a call completed or maybe getting someone. Uh, that uh, may not be uh, very friendly, which also some doesn't happen often. Usually the people that are willing to help with call for backups are uh, always nice and uh, yeah, nice people. M not always the most knowledgeable, but I can carry myself. Basically, if you pay attention to your gear a little bit and uh, keep your weapon especially level appropriate you can carry yourself basically <laughs> there then only there just to group scale so it is not an issue here one of the things i want to show is actually if i shoot uh, that you see that i got an xp from that so all of these decoys do give actually quite a quite a lot of xp uh, they give like 250, I mean, uh, relatively a lot of XP. It's more than just an enemy kill. But yeah, so you could actually jammer pulse them. And also later on in the boss fight, of course, uh, jammer pulse them. But yeah, we will just keep moving on. I am actually going to deconstruct my drone in the background there. There's going to be just two rushers here. I can do that without it. And I would rather it be off cooldown for the next room. Parnell signals getting stronger. And yeah, we're just moving forward and forward. I will actually show this one as well, even though I can't. Uh, so I grabbed the phone there just to get it out of the way. But yeah, there's that yellow junction box. You can also shoot it from there. 
Um, you can go over here. That opens that door. That leads into this laptop. This laptop opens the door across. And as you can see there, there's a key chest in there. But of course, um, this character does, doesn't have any keys at all. Those don't come across with account shared resources or such. But uh, yeah, at level 40, it can be worthwhile to go get that. I do not have the keys here, and I'm not going to go farm keys specifically just to have them here. You could go out of your way and get some if you want to, but yeah, not worthwhile for the this must be where, he keeps his research. where we are now, basically. Uh, often, if you are getting shepherded, uh, if you have a shepherd with you, or if often as well, when I've been the shepherd, I usually just open them for them and they might get something level appropriate uh, it's more likely to drop purple gear or high-end gear so it, it'll drop basically good gear uh, as if as if it's uh, more so than just the normal drops by a tiny amount not not very high amounts but yeah you still also get the resources from there and you get chances at those 100 resource packs yeah, here we're just making our way through all of these enemies. I'm just gonna hit that flame canister and just kill... CC them that way, basically. And we have the final wave. So here... Oh, yeah, we do still get... Well, we get one enemy from the right side. I oh, know, likely there were two, and I missed one. But yeah, it, it's quite funny actually. It's, uh, I haven't seen the solo spawns of here in quite some times, and it, yeah, it is quite a lot less. It's funny how much easier it actually is with uh, one person. We're in a second. We're gonna have those batches of drones uh, here. We're likely going to have only like two or three, maybe, because I'm solo. Okay, yeah, two. But yeah, you can uh, grenade them like that. <laughs> Um, you, with uh, more than two people, you usually already have four, I believe. But yeah, you can easily take care of them with those uh, grenade launchers or jammer. You can also jammer them. There's a phone over here on the right side that I'm just quickly going to grab for its collectible. I'm going to push into this boss room and actually I'm going to grab ammo because I now see that I'm not that topped off. So a lot of people go all the way up and around. Uh, you can do that. There's some resources up there. There's some uh, bleed um, bullets up there as well. But I usually just take that down route. And you saw where I went. I took a right and I came up here. Because also that back, they, they then hang on back there. And uh, while it is uh, not the worst place, of course, it's it's uh, you have a height advantage and... You get to shoot at everything, but you're pretty far back, where this is actually a lot uh, closer. I will put both my skills on uh, the boss. I will try to actually pop his backpack off. So, he's trying to blind me. Actually, I staggered him out of it. And he's already chest broken and my drone's gonna kill him, so... But yeah, normally I would try to pop off both of his backpacks. So that he can no longer nail gun me. It's just the annoyingness of the nail gun. And we did get actually purple gear or something from him. Uh, it is a shoddy, so I'm not going to equip it really. We None of the fights coming up are really short range. And I'd rather have that LMG on my back. In here, we're going to go over here. Go through this lock. Or um, go through this hole and shoot that lock over there. I'm going to take a left here as well, and there's a interact here, as you can see. And I'm going to interact there, and that drops this judge key. And this judge key is going to get used in the next room to give us access to another uh, lootable crate. I'll uh, make note of it once we reach that point. But yeah, shooting out that lock up here through that hole behind us has given us access to open this door and grab all the loot in here. These are commonly known, so I expect everybody <laughs> to kind of know them just by lemming in, lemming in with uh, matchmate groups. In here, I'm going to try and kill... Uh, there's a lieutenant uh, that is giving a health boost to everyone. She's over there. There's always a lieutenant in this room. This room uh, seems to have that mechanic of uh, having a 
elite um, lieutenant in here. On heroic even as well. And uh, yeah, killing those will take away those health boosts uh, bars that uh, enemies have, like the one you saw there, because we have another lieutenant here now, like the green bond there. The second uh, this lieutenant dies, uh, those just all disappear from enemies. So it's an easy way of getting the health pools and the armor pools of enemies down uh, quite easily. And this is where we are using that key. So that key lets us interact here. This is opening that grate across from us, that uh, security grate. And we're going to go back here in this room and get uh, another weapon. I am actually just quickly going to check what that M1A CQB had as a talent. Close and personal, but I'll still take it. I am actually going to give it a quick... Uh, all weapon handling <laughs> treatment i wouldn't recommend this for level 40 but for uh, here i'm just gonna use it to apply the shock rounds we're gonna get in a second to the face of uh, a, a certain mr parnell so um and we're making good pace here and yeah likely after this mission will be the cutoff point for this episode On the left here, there is another key chest, which uh, sadly, yeah, I have no key still, so I cannot grab it still. One thing I can grab is these shock rounds, which I will, and I will put them in that rifle. I swapped to that rifle before I grabbed them, and I will just store those and um, see if I can make use of them. Often I will forget, but sometimes it's quite handy as a, as a panic button, basically. Once this last enemy dies, they will spawn all the way in the back there. I'm going to grenade launcher there and try to catch everything. I didn't do a great job, or there were very few spawns in one of the two. And then I'm just going to take care of this turret. And yeah, this boss, and then we're going to head into the boss fight of Parnell. So this boss fight mechanically is actually a little bit interesting with Parnell spawning above you and you having to deal with decoys and such. Um, I believe in yeah in one of my earlier videos, I think uh, in my Eclipse Masterclass, one of the gameplay parts was here. So I did show what basically an Eclipse can do here. And here as well, again, we have all of these uh, decoys. And it is actually a little bit worthwhile if you're after the XP to just uh, shoot them out like that and uh, get some extra XP that way. One thing that will always happen is that uh, Parnell, the first time he spawns, even here on Story or on Heroic, doesn't matter, he will always be in Charlie, the first one. So you know where to find him. You don't have to search for him for the first one. And once he is taken down a little bit, one generator will activate. It is the one over there. I'm going to actually set up here, so I'm safe from the generator. And I'm just going to take care of this wave on my left. And then I'm going to actually... So if I... The way... The position I'm set up here... So I want this turret to shoot at me. Okay. So the way I'm set up here, the turret cannot actually shoot me. And that's also why it's not choosing to shoot me. So with my shoulder on that side and I can hit it it can't hit me so my body was basically behind the truck for it so it could not actually target me and that's one of the simple things you can do against Asterix is the position that you can shoot its uh, weak points is wider so from here basically his weak points behind there is wider than where that turret is shooting from so you can basically create a little bit of parallax between where the damage is coming from and where you can damage it and yeah that is a simple trick also that you can use on normal heroics and such uh, where is this last enemy there he is so one of the ways you can kind of see where enemies are is that q and e that i get from uh so actually there you see it with parnell the only, he will be the only one that has that E, basically. So here again, the, the turret is shooting at me. I'm going to place myself like this. It's hitting the, the side of that turret. I'm not taking any damage from it, but I can deal damage to it. 
Then I'm going to put my turret on top of uh, on top of here for these few fights. And you see there the one with Q and E above his head is going to be the only real Parnell. All of these other fake Parnells, when I aim at them, you see that I can't get that Q and E to pop up. So with a turret and drone, actually, it's quite easy to tell where he is, even if you... Uh, and I will shoot out a few of those uh, just to have my turret and drone not be um, decoyed by them, basically. And yeah, as you can see, I, I, I will let myself go into armor and such quite often. I'm not, I'm not afraid of dying here. This isn't heroic. We, uh, there are plenty of checkpoints and they don't deal that much damage. So he's no longer in there. He's there. And I, I just only saw that from that Q prompt. Yeah, we're gonna have turrets again, so it's that uh, center one. I can likely kill it before it even starts to fire. And then there's this one. Uh, there isn't a good parallax spot where I am from this side. From back here, you can actually quite easily parallax it by doing exactly like this. But from there, not so much. But it didn't choose to really shoot me. We are in story. It is, again, not hard. And yeah, with these fights, especially just to uh, make note of that for um, when you're fighting these fights on uh, level 40s, I will actually heal up here, just this is the last wave, and I can, so why not? Um, one of the things that you will see a lot of people do, and it kind of feels natural, I was my first my first attempt into here was also uh, with me going up there is going into the towers especially that right tower it just feels natural to take that high ground but this is one of the few places where i won't take the high ground and that's because um these aren't safe places to be you're very surrounded they have a lot of ways of getting you out of these uh, pieces of cover they have grenades they have uh, them just the Parnell spawning behind you and being able to shoot into the air. So yeah, these these places are not for, for us. They're for the enemies. I'm actually gonna put my... I completely lost where this one enemy was. <laughs> gunner, mini gunner has a... Or LMG has set up its, uh, its base. I'm just gonna go end them there quickly. Yeah, this wasn't a real clean fight, but also, yeah, talking as always has, <laughs> makes me a little bit worse. And once Parnell dies here, uh, so we've cleaned up all of the waves, but if you kill Parnell first, if you can catch him easily, then uh, that will trigger it to be the last wave. He will always drop uh, uh, this rifle, the darkness, this uh, marksman rifle. Uh, you can use it. I will not. I don't like using marksman rifles for this run, so I will stick to basically all uh, all automatic weapons. Uh, there I saw I got a G36. I am actually going to open this proficiency cache. I got a Seska knee pad that I will equip. I will just quickly go through my gear and see if anything is worthwhile equipping. The only thing likely, I will put that in just because it's red and I do not have a different holster yet. So I did get a level 32 AK, so I will actually grab a level 32 AK because it's just a level better. And one of the things you will notice is, yeah, especially the base damage goes up by quite a lot going up from one level to the next. So especially with weapons, you want to keep them as close to your level as, uh, as is possible because, yeah, most a purple level 31 weapon will likely be worse than a blue level 33 weapon so going up two levels is yeah uh, it's is quite a big difference that will conclude our uh, first part here so when we return for the next part i will uh, go and end uh, the parnell line because as you can see here parnell well, we have killed Parnell himself. We have not actually completed his manhunt. It still requires police headquarters. And police headquarters is uh, this side mission down here. It's a short one, but we've already gone over an hour. So I will leave that for the start of the next one. 
Yeah. That will lead us into going after Vivian, and that will lead us into this Brooklyn Bridge, sure. the safe house, the side mission, and uh, then uh, strand the tanker. And yeah, just before I uh, end this video, I actually have a short little clip that uh, I'm going to uh, let you see and uh, basically uh, to uh, end this video with. So I hope you enjoy that. I just uh, wanted to show what actually happens at Server Reset to crates. <laughs> and I timed that uh, really well, turns out. Uh, yeah, as you can see, they just uh, close up and get uh, loot back in them again. And uh, you can loot them. Just as a thing that you may have uh, never seen before. Have a good night.